Welcome back to the Next Gen Profits Podcast. We're your big brother, sister, and mentors, Deborah Ann. And Michael Foltazen. Guys, we just landed home in Mexico last night. So we're a little jet lagged. Forgive any uh, word trip ups, mispronunciations <laughs> that happen here because the last few weeks have been packed. We got to meet so many of our phenomenal tribe members live. Shout out to Sarah Zola, Destiny Molinaro, and Jacinda, and so many others that we got to connect with during this month-long stay. We even got to reconnect with some of our graduates, Kristen and Tiffany Gray. Add to that, Apostle Colette's new book, Rise of the Prophetic Champions, was released the day before yesterday on October 1st. The phones have been hopping. Our live chat is hopping. Mm -hmm. You guys, God is doing a new move with this book. And that leads us into our podcast for today. And I want to start off with this quote from Apostle Colette's new book that says, this book is a reminder of the power of alliance. It's not only God's will for the prophets and apostles to align, it's his answer to our cry for revival. God is calling us for revival. He is helping his bride enter into a deeper relationship with him, a deeper understanding of him. And we as prophets are the ones spearheading this move. Amen. You know, Deborah, just as we're sitting here, being back home, we have Jess in the studio with us. I see so many of you prophets out there, part of our tribe, you next gen prophets that have been crying out for change. And guys, you can't do this solo. You can't build the blueprints that your apostles have given you by yourself. You need your peers. And I keep seeing your prophets. We've spoken to you so much in the last month when Prophet Rich was brought on to our tribal assembly. He said something that struck me. He said, when you show honor to even your leaders and when you show honor to those around you, you are looking at placing yourself in alignment with not only your leader, but with God the Father, which means you're going to reap the reward of blessing and favor. Prophets, today's podcast, I want you to leave feeling equipped. I want you, Benjamin, Alicia, Keisha, Ashley, I want you guys to leave feeling equipped and ready Mm. to perform your next-gen duties. So stop waiting for this big grand gesture and idea with your leader and do this together with your peers. Mm. David's mighty men came together. They banded together to see him through to the throne. They made sure that he became king. And then once he became king, they banded together to make sure that his culture, his pattern for his kingdom was implemented everywhere that they went. And it's up to us as champions to band together to see through the pattern and the culture of our leaders. I remember when I first joined our ministry team, I came in with my own picture and my own ideas of how I was going to minister to God's people. And I took my teammates saying, hey, Deborah, you know, our ministry standard is not to cancel alone. Mm. You know, you're supposed to be on there with a ministry buddy to catch your back. It took my team coming to me and saying, hey, look, that revelation you shared was great. But I think God was actually trying to point you in this direction for me to gasp the concept of what God was having me build alongside my apostle. Show up. If you want to set yourself apart as a prophetic leader, well, then you better build your reputation. And it starts by something very simple. Be early to the meetings. Don't Mm -hmm. let your uh, leader arrive to that meeting before you. And if preferable, do as my sister, Pastor Rebecca, does. Show up with coffee. (laughs) You know, that just reminded me of this one time when I first joined the ministry. It was my first official ministry trip back to South Africa. I was a newlywed. We went back and the apostles are holding this big crusade. We had this live worship crusade in Johannesburg and it was my first time being a part of the band. I had no idea what I was doing. I always acted like I did, but I had no clue and I was nervous. I was freaking out. Another problem happened. I arrived at the meeting late. I was not on time. I didn't practice tea for timely. And Apostle Colette pulled me aside and she said, Michael, I need you to come early. 
I need you to be there at my side because when I'm facing all those hundreds of people and all their questions, all the needs, I'm being sidestepped. My focus is being distracted from the goal that I came here with when God gave me the blueprint to pour out into these people. So prophets, be there early, just as Deborah was saying, help serve, be the servants, bring the coffee, bring the apostles coffee, answer the questions that your leader doesn't have to. Show off the culture and the mindset of your apostle. When we show up as champions and we stand in the fullness of our culture and people look at us, they don't see me, Deborah. They don't see you, Ashley. They don't see Michael. They don't see Jessica. They see apostles Craig and Colette. Mm. When people look at you and when you stand and present yourself anywhere that you go, whether it's at the grocery store or even a vi you're visiting another church, do they see your leader? Do they see your culture showing off in you? Step number two. Affirm the strengths of your peers. Point out when they do a good job. This one is so needed in the church today. We have so many prophets that are strong and capable, but they're strong and capable alone. Nobody's willing to step up and say, hey, you're actually better at this job than I am. And there's power in that. When we as champions can acknowledge the strengths of others and allow those strengths to cover our mm -hmm. weaknesses, we become like David's mighty men. We become champions that can slay hundreds and hundreds in a day. We don't have to try and take on the whole army alone, but we can win the war together. Oh, I love that. We can win the war together. Prophets, mm. I feel you tugging on us as we're ministering and pouring out to you, but just stop the solo acts. Rely on those around you. Rely on your peers to help support you and drive your apostles' vision forward. You see, I had a good conversation with one of our tribe members recently, and she was struggling with a lot of bitterness towards her leader, and it just got so deeply involved in the emotional, she lost sight of the vision. She lost sight of why she's part of that team, why she needs her peers around her mm. to drive that apostle's vision forward. When you get so caught up on what all those distractions, because that's really what they are, you lose in sight of your apostle's visions. Mm. Benjamin, Ashley, Destiny, Sarah, I see you. Mm. God is calling on you to look around and say, who can I rely on? Who is my champion at my side? You see, I have Jessica here in the studio with me and she took on something that brings a lot of joy to my heart, where she helps a lot with the media department, especially when I'm not there. It's a part of who I am. It's a part of me that I've cherished and loved. And to see her excel and cry about it and to pray about it and say, Father, we need this equipment so we can excel and mm. be excellent in everything that we do. As a peer, we could rely on one another's strengths. She's so good at the details. She's so good at organizing finances. She has faith for finances. Now, I can rely on that. I can say, Jessica, we need this piece of equipment. Let's pray about it. Let's continue to actually find solutions. What can we do? And we sit and we converse and we have a conversation. Overall, what is it doing? It's helping the peers, Jessica and I, help b fulfill the apostle's vision of being excellent and actually having media equipment that is above par. You see, prophets, work with your peers. The solo acting that I'm picking up in the spirit has got to stop. There is no treat. There is mm. no... There's no culture. There's no next-gen prophet culture. We do things in teams. Rise of the Prophetic Champions, chapter one, it talks all about the teamwork. Team, 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 team. I'm going to keep repeating that word until you get it, mm. prophet. Stop doing your solo act. Show up. Affirm the strength of your peers. How can you help them? What can you sh rely on them with? Work together. Let's come into alignment. If you want to see revival in your church, in your ministry, in the church universal, alignment is necessary, not just with your leader, but with your peers. Because when mm -hmm. peers come together and we band together, anything is possible. Some of the biggest movements that happened in the world is when people came together to protest. People came together to say, the way we've been living hasn't been good enough. We're going to march. We're going to strike. We're going to do whatever it is necessary to see this system change. And guess what? 
History listened. Come on. Governments Come on. listened. Systems changed almost overnight when those peers got together with a common cause to see that change come to pass and come in into alignment with your peers, your team, in your ministry is going to do that exact same thing. And that leads us to our last step. Have some healthy competition. You know, <laughs> Proverbs tells us that iron sharpens iron. And so the countenance of one friend sharpens another. And I know you've heard me quote this scripture many times, but it's never been more important than when it comes to teamwork. Healthy yes. competition is necessary. My sisters and I, we have a healthy competition when it comes to cooking. But I know I will never beat Jessica at plating. Doesn't mean I don't mm -mm. stop trying, though. <laughs> I still try and I'm still learning from her. And that's the point of it. We are meant to sharpen one another and push each other to excellence. When she comes over and she sees my plating is not necessarily as great as it could be, she lifts her eyebrow at me and she goes, next time, add a little cilantro over here. It'll make the colors pop. Have some healthy competition. Amen. Challenge one another. Amen. Poke some fun at one another. Can we stop being so rigid Come in what on. we're doing that we can't sit and say, na 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 na, I'm faster than you. Come on, can't you keep up with me? Can we have some competition? You need the competition, guys. You know, there was a time when I was playing rugby and there was this one school that we could not beat. They were undefeated for an entire year. And we played them in the beginning of the season and at the end of the season. At the end of the season, we beat them for the very first time. But it, it helped us as a team to actually realize they are stronger than us. They are better than us. We need to do better. So all of my teammates came together and we practiced drills harder. We pushed ourselves every single day just so we can beat them. And then we beat them. We won. There was victory at the end of this. Prophets, when you stand in competition with those around you, you are not just lifting up your leader, but you're lifting up each other to one common goal. It says in 2 Samuel 2 verse 18, that one of the sons of Zariah, Asahel, was as fleet-footed as a wild gazelle. How do you think they figured that out? Mm -hmm. They figured it out because when he ran with his brothers and the rest of the mighty men, he ran faster than them. I'm sure they competed with each other over and over again, as most people do, mm -hmm. to compete and find out just how fast he was. Prophet, if you want to set yourself apart with your own reputation and you want to become a prophetic leader and champion at your apostle's side, it's time to work with your peers. It is yes, time amen. to push and pursue this vision together. Don't be afraid to see a teammate is falling behind and say, hey, you're falling behind. Come on, catch up. If you need help, lean on me. I'm going to pull you forward. Don't be afraid to say, hey, I see you missed the meeting. You've missed a couple or you've been late. Is everything okay? Do you need help? You know, our apostle standard is to be timely. We need to be there at least 30 minutes early. Let's do this together. Do you need me to pick you up? Let's work together and pursue vision and become those champions our apostles need us to be. Prophets, come out of the darkness. Shed some light. God is calling you out. He's been positioning you exactly where you need to be right now. So build alongside your peers. Build your apostles' vision and do this together. Okay? We'll be catching you guys next week, Wednesday. For now, take a breath. Breathe. Apply these three steps and focus where you are going. Don't try and rush the process. Relax. If you need help, we're here for you. Go to MyPropheticTribe.com. Hit the little live chat icon. A next-gen prophet is on the other side, ready to bring an impartation into your life. So if you need help, we're here to help you. We'll see you guys next week Wednesday. Bye-bye for now.